Well, Jeff Bezos wants to compete with Bill Gates to get you to eat fake meat. Why do these unelected globalists keep pushing this processed meat on you? Well, they want it. They think it's the future. The Bezos Earth Fund announced an initial $60 million commitment to establish Bezos Centers for Sustainable Protein. That's what they're calling it. Bezos' fiance, Lauren Sanchez, is the vice chair of this association, and she announced this last week at the Aspen Ideas Climate Conference. Finally, one last question that we're thinking a lot about. How do we feed 10 billion people with healthy, sustainable protein throughout this century? This will need a ton of innovation. We're investing heavily in livestock sector and inventions that will give consumers meat options that are better for the earth. I am thrilled to announce, I'm very excited about this one tonight, $60 million to establish Bezos Centers for Sustainable Protein that will help grow these ideas. Their inventions will make plant-based lab-grown meats cheaper, healthier, and tastier. And these sustainable proteins really are getting better. Trust me, I've had one, and they are getting so good. You can hardly tell the difference now. I really like them. Uh, anyway, these examples barely scratch the surface of what's possible when we combine hope with action, ingenuity with determination. And all the processing goes right into my face and my lips and my cheeks. Oh, we're going to talk about her in a second. <laughs> Where's God. the chart? Trust me, it's like, on that. trust me she's, she's had one. I yeah, I've had I had one. I barely what a, what noticed. A, what an endorsement. I know. Trust me, I, mean, I had it's one. It's getting better. <laughs> it's getting better. I barely noticed that it was crap. Right. I think that history is going to look back on this as an incredibly arrogant moment where humans thought that they could do better than nature with labs. Um, so, yeah, let's let's just sort of unpack what she's saying there and what she's trying to push on us. She's saying that meat is terrible for the planet because climate activists say that meat is responsible for 14.5 percent of annual global greenhouse gas emissions. That is a global average, mean, meaning it takes into account well-run agricultural countries like the United States with non-developed countries that have a higher uh, carbon output because they are not as efficient. Uh, and in fact, yeah, you could reinvent meat or you could teach the rest of the world to farm better, like the United States and the United Kingdom. That's also a good idea. In fact, in the UK, beef production is only responsible for 4% of greenhouse gas emissions. And in the US, it's as low as 2.2%. So keep that number in mind, the fact that the United States is so good at agricultural farming, specifically livestock farming, that it's only 2% of annual greenhouse gas emissions. So that 14.5% number is misleading and climate alarmists know it. Here's a chart from the EPA showing in fact that beef emissions only add up to 2.2%. So why? Again, because in the US we get more efficient every single year. And according to the beef industry, they say doing more with less has decreased US beef emissions intensity by 29% and total carbon emissions by 30% since 1975. So consider how low that number is, 2%. Can lab-grown meat do any better? They cannot, and in fact, we already know it. In April of 2023, this study came out of UC Davis showing that lab-grown meat has a much higher carbon footprint than traditional livestock farmed meat. Researchers at UC Davis found what's called ACBM or animal cell-based meat is much worse for the environment than traditional meat because instead of, oh, something that lives in nature, eats grass, contributes to carbon sink, instead you need this whole process. Now, I don't completely understand it, but I don't think that's better than a cow standing in a farm, do you? Uh, so all of this processing of things that come from Fields of monocrop culture, of, of monocrop fields, 
it's not at all better for the earth. And in fact, the researchers say that the results indicate that the environmental impact of this ACBM production is likely to be orders of magnitude higher than medium beef production and is highly refined growth medium utilized for ACBM production. And in fact, they said that lab grown meat could increase global warming between four and 25 times more than retail beef. So why do you think Jeff Bezos and Lawrence Sanchez think that this is the solution? Have they not seen this paper? Do they really think that their laboratories are going to do better than well-run agricultural farming? Wouldn't the obvious solution be to take the countries that are not efficient with agricultural livestock farming and teach them to do it more efficiently? Doesn't that seem, is that painfully obvious to anybody else here? Yes. Mueller, yes. Mueller, right? Okay, but the Bezos Earth Fund is saying, oh no, we're really concerned about methane. And in fact, they've launched a methane satellite into the sky a few weeks ago. And they're doing that because they want to share all this data with us. Watch. I don't know if you know this, but think about it. Methane has caused 30% of global warming. So how are we going to fix it? This is how. We're going to start right here with Methane Sat. It's a game-changing satellite we support with the Environmental Defense Fund. Now, before Methane Sat launched into orbit just last week, it just happened. It was so exciting to watch it go up in the air. Uh, we weren't able to see the big picture of where and how bad the methane leaks are. But because of the brilliant minds who figured out a better way, we now have innovative technology which we can see and measure leaks like never before. It's actually incredible. And we're really proud of this data because we're gonna make it free for everyone which is good for those working hard to cut their admissions. Okay. Uh, so they I watch about three to four methane satellites a day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, launch a methane bomb. There's going to be a red target over your house. Yeah. Right. Now they're going to start tracking us like the, uh, the global poop map. Yeah, yeah. they're going to be watching your house. Why is that guy so hot? You know what the thing is? They're going to limit your Amazon purchases based on your methane output. That's what Bezos is going to do to you from now on. That they're scanning your house and like, nope, too much out of that house. Yeah. We're going to shut them down. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't point this out because Lauren Sanchez is trending today on X because of this red carpet appearance. Some people are saying that, well, she looks a little masculine. Uh, maybe she's you know, had plastic surgery to change her gender. No, she hasn't had any no, surgery. I don't, that's what's trending online. But I think, uh, I don't think she's a man. I think she's just a woman who have had, who's had a ton of plastic surgery and does not look like a 54 year old middle-aged woman would otherwise look. Uh, my point being not to be mean, she should look like this if she wants to, right? She's rocking it. She's loving her pretty clothes and her rich fiance, but she may not be the role model for natural living that <laughs> we think? might want to follow her diet, right? She's got a lot of processed aftermarket stuff, so she may be more willing to eat processed meat than other people. She goes into some sort of chamber every night, some sort well, of like... I just, I see it. I see it as like, have you seen the movie Snowpiercer with Chris Evans? No. Where you've no. got like it's it's you know it's basically it's basically just it's you know like a uh, I can't think of it, like an, almost like an allegory on on American society but like in the back of this train which is the, all of human civilization now lives on this one train and in the back they all eat these protein bars because they're in a closed environment and so and they, they come to find out the protein bars are made by bugs or made from bugs and then they break out of the back of the train as they move to the front of the train they find the people in the front of the train they have live chickens they have a, a an aquarium where they can get actual fresh sushi and so it's like you know this is what this reminds me of is you know that the bezos and these these people that that are billionaires are not going to be eating this this lab grown meat they're still going to get their cows their chickens their eggs and it's just going to be everybody they want everybody else to do it it's and communism that's just, that's, you know it's that's how it is it's communism yeah. in action right it doesn't work because the you know because the proletariat will eat bugs right mm -hmm. and and the um and the elites will eat the eat meat eat real foods right yeah and i don't know if she ever tried to be an actress at all but that the lab grown meat is actually delicious i didn't buy it that no. was not good acting so you can tell philip is right she means for you to eat it. She's not really going to eat it. 
Now, this is also a platform of Bill Gates. So these two uh, midlife crisis billionaires are on the same wavelength with the synthetic beef. Here's an interview that Bill Gates did recently with MIT Review uh, saying that he thinks synthetic beef is the way of the future, but he doesn't actually think the poorest 80 countries will be eating synthetic meat. He thinks all rich countries should eat synthetic beef. He says you can get used to the taste difference and the claim is that they're gonna make it taste even better. So rich countries should be eating synthetic beef, which is completely opposite because it's the rich countries that can produce beef with the lowest carbon output. What is he studying? I think he's just not. Um, and also, you know, they're selling this to you as we know you need protein. So we're going to push this synthetic protein on you only Protein is not really the main macronutrient that we need from meat. And researchers are trying to warn us about this. In fact, Harvard-trained doctor and author Georgia Eddy warns this in her new book, Change Your Diet, Change Your Mind. And she told the Daily Mail that it's less about proteins and more about the micronutrients that you cannot get from plants. She's talking about like, yes, you can get protein from vegetables, um, but you can't get some of the other, she says, essential nutrients that are much more difficult, if not in some cases impossible, to obtain from plants. She noted that meat is the only food that contains every nutrient we need in its proper form and also the safest food for our blood sugar and insulin levels. True, it does not spike your insulin. These nutrients include vitamin B12, omega-3 fatty acids, zinc, choline, iron, and iodine. You can get synthetic versions and maybe that's what they'll put in their lab grown meat. But in fact, there is also a lot of research showing that a meat free diet can be linked to depression and anxiety. Um, here are some of the things that I'm actually quite shocked that the Daily Mail linked to these stories. Uh, I'm not going to read them all, but there's so many out there showing that in fact, um, a meat free diet is linked to depression and anxiety. Uh, pause this screen and seek out, seek out those stories for yourself or just uh, seek out this Daily Mail story. So Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and Lauren Sanchez, eat that processed stuff if you want to. Do what you want to your body. Do what you want. Do what you want, right? Uh, I, I don't care, but I do not want any part of this. Let us know how much you want in on their fake meat project. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.